Member Statements. The member for Waterloo. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It's my honour to rise in the House to share the voices of students from Lincoln Heights Public School. Lincoln Heights alone requires over $3 million in repairs and is one of many schools in Waterloo. Across the city, over $68 million in repairs are required. The students wrote to me to share their concerns about cuts to school repair funding. Here's what they have to say. Grade 4 student Ryan, we don't have air conditioning. Our classrooms get really hot. Our windows don't have screens, so sometimes wasps fly in on a hot day. I got stung by wasps twice while in class. His classmate, Emily, also wants the government to fund fixes to air conditioning. Madison in grade five says, in my classroom, it's usually good in the winter, but one time our heat broke and we had to wear our winter coats in class to keep warm. However, in the summertime, it is so hot. One time our classroom was so hot that our teacher was thinking of sending us home. Caden, age 10, wants the government to know how difficult it was to learn after his class was moved to the cafeteria because of a ceiling leak in their classroom. William, who just graduated from Lincoln Heights, says that teachers and students should be able to complete their work based on their abilities and not on the environment they are working in. Joshua, grade 8, was blunt. Lincoln Heights' crumbling state is a perfect example of why the school repair budget shouldn't be cut. Thanks to the students from Lincoln Heights for speaking up. Keep using your voices to make the world a better place. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. Member for Ottawa Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Um, this afternoon, I rise to contrast the experience of two Ontario residents. One of them lives in Ottawa. The first person I want to talk to everyone about, her name is Bobby Assoon. Bobby's a 47-year-old woman who lives with chronic pain given multiple sclerosis, and she uses a wheelchair. She is unable to maintain employment and therefore on ODSP. Recently, Bobby became homeless after her daughter moved out, and her monthly ODSP benefits were cut by $428 a month. Now Bobby is living in an emergency shelter in Ottawa's East End, unsure if and when she can be safely housed. A cut to ODSP benefits makes her situation worse. She needs a safe home, a livable income, and medicinal cannabis for her chronic pain. Meanwhile, Mayo Schmidt, the former CEO of Hydro One, is living a much different life thanks in part to our tax laws. After this government fired him, Mr. Speaker, Schmidt's yearly income in 2018 rose to $9 million, a significant portion of which comes from cashing out stock options in his executive contract. At a time when one in seven Ontarians are living in poverty, how can someone like Bobby not have a decent home while Mayo Schmidt gets to cash out stock options with massive tax rebates? It's not right. It's time to eliminate all forms of corporate welfare. It's time to dedicate the resources we have to lift Bobby and other people like her out of poverty. Thank you, member statements. Member for London, Fanshawe. I rise in the legislature to honor a man deserving of recognition who recently passed away. Reverend Dr. George Harvey Crowell was a remarkable man, husband, father, and friend who lived a life dedicated to helping others. An ordained Presbyterian minister, George was educated and spent the early part of his career in the United States before joining the Religious Studies Department at the University of Windsor, where he taught social ethics until his retirement. He focused on issues of peace and justice, environmental protection, and racial harmony. For the last 20 years, he was most passionate about the need for a change in monetary policy, seeing it as an essential element for the preservation of social safety net for all Canadians and a necessary part of maintaining a just society. George was a dedicated activist supporting the work of many social justice organizations, including the London and District Labour Council, the Society of Christian Ethics, the Council of Canadians, and the Committee on Monetary Economic Reform, and among others. George had been a friend of mine for many years. It was his integrity and his conscience that I always admired. Whenever we spoke, he was always well-researched and steadfast in his conviction to help others. I would like to extend my condolences to the Crawwell family and all those affected by George's passing. It is a great loss to our community, but I am sure his legacy will continue in those who remember him and his, and his incredible contributions. We will miss you, George. Member statements. The member for Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the basic income pilot was designed to find a better way to lift people out of poverty and change lives. 
Cancelling it is wrong and devastating to the thousands of people, families who in good faith took the risk and chose to join. Almost 4,000 households, single mums, families with young kids, senior citizens. They've all had the rug pulled out from underneath them. People have made decisions to go back to school, to find an apartment closer to work, to take a new job. The Premier broke his promise to them. Hugh Siegel, former Conservative Senator and Principal Secretary to Bill Davis, called it a horrific decision. Here is the sequence of the Minister's responses. It was a tough decision. I broke a promise. It's fake news. It wasn't a promise. It's going to cost $17 billion. Some people dropped out. To a baseless attack on my colleague from Don Valley East this morning. These responses do nothing for the families that have been devastated by this decision, and the Premier and the Minister must do the right thing by these families, and they must reinstate the pilot. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member's statements. The member for Scarborough Southwest. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, every single day I receive emails, uh, messages, phone calls from the people of Scarborough Southwest with deep concerns about the Ford government's priorities. So it's been two months since the provincial election, and what has the Ford government delivered to Ontario? Well, they have failed to deliver critically needed mental health funding, cutting $335 million a year. They have failed to deliver overdue increases to vulnerable people on OW and ODSP programs, especially those in Toronto community housing, in my riding of Scarborough Southwest. They have failed to deliver on fully researching the now cancelled basic income pilot, which could have provided those in need across Ontario with better opportunities for the future. They have failed to deliver sensible and scientific plans for the environment, cancelling cap-and-trade program and wasting public dollars on future lawsuits. They have failed to deliver on reconciliation with Ontario First Nations. They have failed to deliver a safe and modern sex ed curriculum for Ontario students putting children's safety at risk. They have failed to deliver on urgently needed funding to repair schools in Scarborough, putting our children's future in jeopardy. They have failed to deliver a logical and common sense response to gun control and gun violence in our city. They have failed to deliver a government that respects dem democracy, the democratic freedom and autonomy of Toronto. But what have they delivered? Buck a beer. <laughs> they are willing to subsidize beer while ignoring the needs of our most vulnerable people in this province. So on behalf of the 107,000 people of Scarborough Southwest, I'm asking this government to do the right thing, work for the people, because that's what governments are supposed to do. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member statements. That's it.